This is the most important characteristic of bioviolence. It raises incomparable levels of panic. Bioviolence is about planes flying empty or simply not flying at all. This is about people refusing to interact with each other for fear of unseen affliction. It is about canceling public entertainment and tourism. Even going to a movie would be too dangerous. Bioviolence is ultimately about hiding our children. Everyone will be potentially vulnerable to our most fundamental terror, the fear of disease. No one would know when an attack is over, and no government can credibly tell an anxious population where and when safety can be restored. Ultimately, if your ambition is to rattle the pillars of modern civilization and perhaps cause it to collapse, effective use of disease would set in motion political, economic, and health consequences so severe as to call into question the ability of existing governments to maintain their citizens' security. If you want to stop modern civilization in its tracks, bioviolence is the way to go. And let me assure you, they know it. The notion that no one will ever commit a catastrophic bioviolence is, to my way of thinking, simply untenable. Simply stated, there are capacities to do harm, and there are people who want to devote those capacities precisely to doing that harm. There should be no doubt that we are vulnerable to a rupture. I don't know if it'll be today. I don't know if it'll be next year. I don't know if it'll be in a decade. I put no time on this whatsoever. But the day that it happens, the day that disease is, is effectively used as an instrument of hate, will profoundly change everything. But I want to repeat, this is not fundamentally about disease. This is not fundamentally about health. This is about violence. Allow me to restate briefly. A grave, perhaps apocalyptic security danger can be afflicted by small, organized cadres who, by manipulating and disseminating disease, can instigate a level of violence that heretofore has been the exclusive domain of state-to-state -state warfare. The dynamics of science, the pace of scientific progress, means that this security danger must be addressed as an existential component of the human condition, and it must be addressed in perpetuity. Prevention is not something that will be done once, then humanity can move on. It must be a process of decisions that reconfigure our approaches to science, law, public health, and these reconfigured approaches will entail changes that our successors will inherit. Whatever decisions we make now, whatever actions are taken now, must withstand the test of time. And so here is our question. How can we confront these dangers in a, in a flattening world where accelerating circulation abets the ready movement of science and technology, as well as malevolent people? The wrong answer is to think that America or even a few of our allies can insulate ourselves. This is, in every respect, a global problem. The pathogens are everywhere. The laboratories are everywhere. The means of transportation allow for movement of any of these items to everywhere. Once released, a disease would spread without regard to race, religion, or nationality. Public health responses would have to be organized on an international plane. Law enforcement capacities to detect and apprehend the offender would have to be organized internationally. Altogether, bioviolence shrinks the planet into an interdependent neighborhood. No missile defense will protect us from bioviolence. Improved border security will not keep disease at bay. Like it or not, the pursuit of security from bioviolence must be global. This is the challenge for today's futurists, today's cannons, marshals, and Stimson's to create a new global order that contains threats, promotes progress, and enables the future to peacefully become the present. 